Hello, everybody. I'm John Dorhauer, General Minister and President of the United Church of Christ, and welcome to Conversations. Periodically, I'm going to sit down with leaders across the denomination and uh, invite them to reflect on what they're seeing in the life of the church. My guest today is a longtime dear friend and conference minister of the Pacific Northwest, Mike Denton. Mike, say hi and tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, I've been in the Pacific Northwest Conference for about 13 years. Um, been happy to live here and learn more. I grew up in the Cleveland, Ohio area. Northeast Ohio is my home, and so I still have some family back this way. Also live here with uh, my wife, Lauren, who is a UCC pastor locally, and our son, Leo, who is seven years old. And uh, they're out right now wandering in the woods uh, nearby. Yeah. And how are you all doing as a family? You know, we're, we're doing what we can. Um, Leo's school was closed down uh, a couple weeks ago now. And okay. so we're, we're figuring that out and figuring out that mix with uh, two pastors at home and um, a child who is a very curious child. But I, I think we're doing as well as we can and figuring out a little bit every day as we go. A lot of time outside, uh, a lot of time for cuddling and reading together and uh, um, just taking some breaks with each other and from each other uh, when we need to as well. So doing the best we can like everybody else. Yeah. So Mike, uh, when this really started kicking up seriously a little over a month ago, um, the Pacific Northwest and Seattle in particular was sort of ground central in the U.S. And you were one of the first of your colleagues among the Council of Conference ministers to see what was happening. I remember you were one of the first to write that we may be asking people to stay home from church, and now almost all of us are. When I read that, I thought, oh, surely not. But you saw that early. Uh, you, you were developing some things within your churches that proved helpful. Uh, my first question to you is uh, now almost a full month into this, what are you seeing? Yeah, and I, and I think, first of all, the, the main reason we adjusted first is because we had to. Um, mm-hmm. The, the folks that are on the front end of a tsunami like this, and this is, feels like in some ways like sort of the sol- slow motion tsunami, um, we had to adjust first. And so that's, that's I, for, for whatever reason, uh, that we, we were the ones that had to deal with this first. Um, I'd say a month in, uh, it's starting to move into a different kind of realm of normal. Um, okay. A couple of things that we did pretty soon afterwards is we had uh, conference calls three times a week for those who are pastors and leaders within the life of our conference. Um, we had one for worship leading, one for folks who are dealing with pastoral care issues and related issues, and one for those who are involved in administration and finance work within the life of the church. So part of what we recognize is that we didn't have all the answers. We didn't know how to do this. This is something that none of us in our lifetimes had really faced or dealt with uh, within the uh, Pacific Northwest Conference. So this was a time for us to figure out as quickly as possible uh, what we were learning from each other and what we were practicing in different places. So those conversations have uh, continued. We just finished one today. Um, Andrew Warner from Optic uh, came and joined us and talked with us about stewardship. We're recognizing the need to uh, emphasize and learn how within this context to do a lot of the things we've always done as church, uh, but figure out ways to do it in new ways. Mm -hmm. And you you talked about on these calls, there are things that you had to learn about new ways to do church. Well, the next question, what are you learning? Uh, Again, you all were at the front of this. You, in some ways, were and still are creating the curve that the rest of us are trying to pay attention to. Tell us what you're learning. Yeah, I, I think there have been a combination of uh, uh, pleasant surprises uh, that have really come together at this moment in time. Um, I think that the big and most wonderful surprise is that uh, people are better than most of us thought they might be. <laughs> um, I think that better in, in, the, in the middle- In terms of learning ability. Uh, as far as, uh, a way that they want to treat each other, um, yeah. as far as learning ability, as far as just everything. Yeah. Um, I, I think that the sort of the, the main narrative that came out was about uh, those who are hoarding or um, uh, collecting materials and sort of bring it into their own bunker, either for profit or out of fear. Uh, and sure, some of that happened um, without, without a question that a little bit of that happens everywhere. But I saw much more of people trying to figure out what they could give and what they could share and that the way that they could help each other um, help their neighbors. 
uh, folks that had to uh, be behind uh, closed doors because that was the only safe place for them to be because they're in a high risk group. Um, their, their first concern was not necessarily around their personal safety, but trying to figure out um, how they could help uh, from that space and from that place. Um, there was not this, um, this, this tendency to sort of turn uh, inward in fear. There was this, this tendency to want to turn outward uh, to our neighbors, the outward towards our family, outward towards fellow church members, to try to figure out how we could help and be supportive of each other and how to be with each other. Uh, part of that came through people's experience of worship. Um, we did have to move towards uh, worshiping not in person uh, pretty quickly into this. And we did as much as we could to help people find resources for that um, as soon as we could as well. And again, their biggest resources all the way along have been each other. Uh, as we did that, the big concern that a lot of people had uh, was that some of the folks who were older members of congregations uh, might not either be able or willing uh, to adopt to that method of worship. Uh, we didn't really find that, um, although there were some gaps and some problems that we're still working through. And again, uh, fellow members are more than willing to help out with. Um, when I joined Plymouth United Church of Christ, uh, our downtown Seattle church, yeah. the very first member that joined their worship call was a, a 94 year old member of their congregation um, who uh, wanted to come and join and be present. Um, that's what we're hearing more yeah. often than not. Yeah. Um, but again, that doesn't mean that some folks aren't having some more problems than others, uh, but some of the, the pieces that people have really done to establish what they're calling tech deacons, uh, within the life of their church to help those uh, come along who might not have been able to come along otherwise has, has been rapid. Um, kind of within every sort of crisis that I think that we ever see as uh, humanity, people go through a series of moments. The, the first is just feeling it and praying for people that are in the middle of it. And we went, we went through that too. Um, the next wave is people wanting to know what they can give um, and mm -hmm. figuring out how to give either financially or of time or some of the expertise that they have. Um, the third piece, which I think we're moving in and through, is what services can be developed um, for those who are being more effective and how to organize those, those gifts of charity and those gifts of time, those gifts of, gifts of access in order to have the biggest effect. Um, and we're right in the middle of figuring out some of those service pieces now. Um, around the edges is also uh, beginning more and more conversations around advocacy, uh, recognizing that uh, charity and service take us to a certain place, but there's also people whose voices are not being heard, uh, voices whose people are being, voices who are being ignored that also need to be lifted up. And so I think the conversations, particularly around our homeless community, have really focused around that and, and again, moved through the processes relatively quickly. Uh, so the, that, that's been one of the pieces that, that we've learned. Um, there was a uh, book I read um, a few years ago um, by Rebecca Solnit. Um, uh, the book's called A Paradise Built in Hell. And uh, mm -hmm. she wrote it in 2010. And this was a series of stories of natural disasters uh, where there had been natural disasters in different parts of the world that she studied and she wrote about. And one of the things that she talked about was that uh, in many ways, when a natural disaster happens, um, those systems and institutions that have previously been in place um, fall to the side because um, they're not able to necessarily uh, continue in the same way. And even some of those systems of prejudice and those systems of um, uh, bias in some ways, not completely, but in some ways fall away. And what she recognized and saw in the middle of that is that it's in these moments when we recognize that we're all vulnerable, when we recognize that we're all human, that people start to come together in unique and beautiful and wonderful ways. Um, in ways that before some of those systems uh, that are sometimes based on ideas of control of people, when they lose control, we rise up and we rise up together. And uh, learning that and seeing that has been absolutely amazing on every level. Our uh, uh, democratic governor and the head of the Republican caucus within the state of Washington are not people who you would describe as uh, close friends. Um, but within days after this and what it became clear that we were really facing, all the other posturing and politics that they'd done uh, fell away to figure out how to help each other. Um, I think we're seeing that in many places in the country. We're not unique in that. Um, but I think the, the opportunity for that to see how good people are, um, how willing people are, are willing to adapt and change 
um, is, is amazing and beautiful and uh, awe-inspiring. So that may be the perfect transition into my last question for you. Where are you seeing the hope? Yeah. I am so surprised I see hope every day. <laughs> um, well, tell us about I, that. I, I didn't expect uh, to be in the middle of a, uh, this slow-moving natural disaster right. and, uh, and have my hope restored. Um, there are hard days and there are, some days are harder than others. Uh, but at the end of these days, the willingness of people to be present for each other and to help each other has been absolutely stunning, absolutely stunning. And every time one thing falls away, uh, people figure out another way to rise up and sure without question, uh, there is going to be grieving, um, without question, there is going to be pain without question. There is going to be a loss. Yes. And uh, without question, there will likely be a loss of uh, some of our churches and some of our institutions. And, and without a doubt, uh, some of the members of our congregations, we are going to face loss in the coming days. And I'm also convinced that there will be a recovery on the other side. And that this is not something that will last forever. Um, right now, in the middle of it, I know it seems like it, and it really seems like it if you're uh, lonely behind closed doors. Um, but this is not something that will last forever. And by, with the connections that we're making with each other now, the reaching out that we're doing to each other now, and are likely going to have to do for at least several months, um, these connections that we're making and building and growing, uh, these are the things that we've needed for such a long time. Yeah. And off of the, uh, some, some of the, the, the awful experience of what has come now, um, I do believe that two things are going to rise and are continuing to rise, um, which are going to take us to a different place. Um, the first is simply meaning. Um, this is a, a global crisis, not right. unlike other crises, but as far as the speed at which has come is unique. Uh, so there is an opportunity for global unity, global celebration, global grieving, global mourning, and global recovery in a way that there has never, ever really been um, for humanity, um, except for this moment. And that speaks volumes to some of the other things that we have to face. Some of the other things that are even slower moving uh, tsunamis, such as uh, related to climate change, such as relating to um, oppression and sectarianism that continues to, to pull us apart in different ways. Um, if we can figure this out, there's a lot we can figure out. Yeah. If we look at this as a unique moment, as opposed to that moment that really taught us who we are and who we might be and who we could become, um, that, that will be the loss. Right. But I don't think we're going to lose it. Um, I, I think this is changing us. This is changing who we are and who we can be and who we might be. And that makes me uh, supremely hopeful, even on those days that I'm afraid and lonely and worried. On those days, there's also that hope that something else um, can emerge from this and will emerge from this, and we're proving it every single day. Mike, what a gift you are to the church. Um, what a dear friend you are to me. I thank you for just these few minutes uh, of your time, your reflection, and uh, your insight and wisdom. Thank you, Mike. Well, thank you, and thank you for all the members in the National Church. Uh, I, I have, um, I think there's been some ways where some of us, because we're uh, conference ministers, have been uh, more visible in this moment than others. Um, but the support that we've received from the, the National Church, and I'll speak to myself personally, the report that I've re support I've received from you and many other members of your staff um, have been uh, wonderful and fantastic, and they're very much appreciated. So thank you. Well, you're welcome, and I'm sure they will enjoy hearing that when they watch this video. They, they will appreciate your gratitude. This has been Conversations. Our guest has been Mike Denton. I want to thank you all for joining us. Until next time.